You're watching Sunday Morning Matters on KC24, your local election headquarters. And it is absolutely permissible for a parent to discipline their child by spanking them on the buttocks. Uh, that is not the issue. And in fact, in this investigation, the, there is no injury to the buttocks. And so that's not what we're investigating. And although I can't talk about the specifics of the injury, I can say that the injury in this case is not on the buttocks. Police Chief Jerry Dyer there on Thursday, a day after I sat down with the Assemblyman Joaquin Arambula saying that uh, all he did was, was spank his, his daughter on the buttocks after um, really to discipline her. We're talking about that now. we got two guests this week on our political panel. Uh, you know this guy over here. Most of you love him. Uh, the host of Unfiltered <laughs> with Jim Veros on FresnoCast.com. Jim Veros. Jim, always nice to have you on Absolutely. the program. And uh, she covers politics for Valley Public Radio. Nice to have her on for the first time on this program. Laura Satsui, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, I appreciate it. So we're going to talk about TJ Cox and David Valadeo because I know you did some reporting on that Ed. race here recently, kind of the aftermath. Uh, Jim, you've had your, you know, your ear to the ground hearing a bunch of stuff. We want to get to that. But with this ongoing story of this, the shocking arrest, really, of, of the assemblyman and everything that's happened. And first off, we have to be clear, we're taping this on Thursday night. And so that's a lot of time between uh, Thursday night and Sunday morning. So this is a fluid story. Things might be changing. And they've been changing every single day. You commend the assemblyman for getting out in front of this story trying to get out in front of it, telling his side of the story, because right after he was arrested, it was one-way traffic, right? He tells his side of the story. The risk you, you run, though, is that if something that you said is contradicted immediately, for example, by the police chief repeatedly in this case, then you might have a bit of a problem with your supporters and other people, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. Full disclosure, uh, a lot of times when we take Fresno Cast, we're at uh, Joaquina Rambula's uh, in-laws restaurant. So full yes. disclosure, uh, you know, obviously I, I've met the assemblyman a number of times. He's always been very cordial and very polite. You know so. members of his family as well. Very so yeah, well. no, everybody's tight. Yeah, you, you know, and, 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 you know, that preamble in place now, um, you know, politically, this is tough because you're talking about a seven-year-old girl, right? This isn't about arguing about cannabis or potholes here. You mm -hmm. know, this, this is real life stuff. When you are in damage control politically, you need to have a professional helping you saying, okay, you know, obviously something has gone on. What are the scenarios that are going to happen after we make this statement? And it really, really looked like after your interview with him, you had a sense that is the Fresno Police Department going to stay quiet and, and let the process go through or was there going to be some statements made and obviously the police chief watched that interview and heard what he had to say and was not having it. Well, and, and Chief Dyer, uh, Laura, he's really trying to walk that fine line right sure, now, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, he's clearly said, uh, you know, I know the uh, assembly member. I, you know, we're friendly. I'm fr I'm fr exactly. He said, I said, he's a friend of yeah. mine. Exactly, and so he's really trying to get. Uh, the message across that him and his team are being, you know, objective here. They're doing the best they can, but um, clearly it's difficult when he's saying this is not just about an injury from a spanking on on his daughter's buttocks. It's maybe something else. So that makes it really confusing for the public. It makes it difficult for us to do our jobs when we feel like people aren't answering our questions straight. Well, in making it difficult for us and people reading these stories is that as of now, when we're talking Thursday night, there's been no police report released. We do not know specific details about the injury other than what the chief just told us on Thursday that it was an injury not in the area of the bottom and so and that's because the case does involve a child that's why we're not getting any of those details so really nobody really knows what's going on here you know we we report what the assemblyman says who's saying it very definitively as, as you saw that I spanked my child that's all I did. I don't know what she told people. I don't know what mark you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then we have the chief saying as much as he can say what he feels like he, he can say legally. But I will, I will ask this. Is there a worse person that you can have in this community going against you and your story than Chief Dyer at this point? In a case like this? You, you don't want Chief Jerry Dyer pushing back against you as you're trying to push out your you know your story right and, and it was th something in your interview that you had with the assemblyman where you asked him you know what what you know what happened and he literally said you know hey I spanked her and I and I feel bad about it but I don't know why I was um, no idea no idea why I was brought in and and you know a lot of us kind of said well wait a minute 
you didn't ask, you didn't, before you made the statement, you didn't say, hey, what's going on here? I, I, you, the police chief came out and s said these things because you put the, the police chief on a defensive. What you're saying is, is the police didn't tell you what was going on and you have no idea. And the police chief was not going to allow this sort of sort of misdirection to happen in public. And, and you know, you came for him and now you got him. Let's talk politics here a little sure, bit yeah. because we saw an immediate reaction, Laura, from the Fresno County Republican Party, right. Fred Vanderhoof, putting out that statement. Yeah, saying that maybe he should resign. And, um, and then soon after, the Fresno County Democratic Party said, uh, you know, we think he is a good father and that really it's jumping to conclusions to uh, say that someone should resign and using the word hypocrisy. And, uh, um, and that's something Joaquin Arambula has said as well, is that he thinks it's hypocritical that the Republican Party um, is calling for his resignation. But, um, but we don't really know what's going to happen. I mean, I don't know if this is, uh, he won by, you know, quite a bit in this last election. And so I don't know necessarily if this is going to lose his, him supporters or what's going to happen next. I mean, maybe it's good for him that this happened after the election, of all things. Just like investigators are walking that fine line with what they're saying to the media, just like the assemblyman now is being very careful about how he's handling this. I think other people in the political world, perhaps people who work with colleagues of, of the assemblyman, his supporters, people, fellow Democrats, it, it's tricky for them right now. They want to be supportive, but at the same time, this is a seat that is a very valuable seat to Democrats. But, and there's probably, I can count them on my hand immediately, people who would be happy to jump into a, a role if an opening were to, were to happen. Happy to, taking phone calls and making phone calls over the past few days. I mean, that, that's been going on, not from Republicans, but from Democrats. I mean, there I can name three that most likely that would be in the city hall right now that would want a shot at this seat if it were to be vacated. I mean, I'm telling you, the Republican Party locally, the Fresno Republican Central Committee, all they had to do was keep it classy. All they had to do was sit back and say, you know what, we're gonna, you know, we've been a fan of due process now all year long. We're, you know, obviously the Assemblyman is not a member of the Republican Party. A, he's a member of the Democratic Party. We're gonna defer all questions to the Democrats and we're gonna wait, we're gonna sit back and we're gonna see. Instead- You think Fred jumped the gun. Instead, they didn't have any professionals. It was amateur hour over there and they decided to come out guns blazing and you wanna know why you keep losing elections in this area is because you keep doing stuff like that. All you had to do was keep it classy, sit back and watch the Democrats do their thing, which is what they would have done if you didn't politicize it. Now you did, now you've organized all of them and now they're coming after you instead of talking about the assemblyman. I'm sorry, how many more campaigns do you have to lose locally to realize to keep your mouth shut? All and right. they didn't do it. All right, so this story is obviously developing. We're going to stay on top of it. Let's talk about David Valadeo, TJ Cox. You did a story earlier this right, week yeah. talking about how did so many people get this thing wrong mm -hmm. in the end? I mean, everybody thought that TJ Cox had a chance, but most people said this was going to lean Republican at least. Exactly, yeah. That was something that I kind of asked people. I asked someone from uh, Larry Sabato's Crystal Ball that's a forecast and political analysis out of the University of Virginia, and um, they, he had said uh, right before the election, yeah, they moved their forecast from likely Republic, Republican to leans Republican, which is still not a toss-up. Um, but, you know, he said he was surprised and that perhaps... Um, Perhaps instead of looking at the history of the district, which is that you know an incumbent running has uh, always done very well, even with the Democrats, that's a majority Dem district. Uh, maybe they should have just looked at whether or not Hillary Clinton won that district, because that seemed to be sort of the trend: is districts that Clinton won in the 2016 presidential election flipped? Pretty much that was it, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it, it came down to that: if your district voted for Hillary Clinton two years ago, then you voted Democrat in, in this election. So, not that you did talk to people who. While most people, it was more of a maybe a vote against Trump, I think, a lot, yeah. and not against David Valadeo. There were people you talked to that, that, that maybe did come out because of David Valadeo. They didn't like him as much. I would say so, yeah. I spoke to one woman um, who is now the chair of the Kings County Democratic Central Committee, and she said, uh, you know, she felt very mobilized by the election of Trump in the mm -hmm. first place to get involved in her local politics. And then when she uh, sat down and had a meeting with David Valadeo and brought up certain issues, she felt like he wasn't really listening to her. And so, you know, her words 
words to me were, I thought, I'm going to get myself a new congressman. And so well, she, uh, did. she did. Yeah. You know, and that was really the ground game was her going out there after that. And now there's some fingers being pointed on the losing side of this. Yeah. As there always is. There, listen, this is not new. Obviously, when an incumbent loses, there's always going to be a blame game going on. But there are there's definitely name uh, name calling and, and finger pointing going on in the Valdeo camp right now. And it's unfortunate because you have a lot of great people there. And, you know, obviously David Valdeo served that district very well. I mean, obviously he took on Democrats and won uh, repeatedly, got caught up in this blue wave sort of, whatever you want to call it. And, and, and you know, obviously if he wants to... You know, you never know. Maybe David Valdea wants to come back and get another shot back at his title, or or, mm -hmm. or not. You still want to you still want to end on, on on a classy note, and, and I'm hoping that the uh, the camps can uh, sort of have a little kumbaya and, and move forward and learn learn from this campaign and and, and take it on in 2020. We'll tell you what, you guys hang out. We got a couple more things we want to talk about, all right? But stay with us right now. After the break, she campaigned for city council as a teenager, and she was sworn in at the young age of 20. What is it? that drives Kingsburg's Jewel Hurtado. Our interview next.